All right, everyone. Well, welcome to GlomCon today. We appreciate everyone joining and your patience this morning. I'm Dio Wagus back in Houston, Texas, and I welcome, like as I said, to our seminar series. We're glad that you all joined us. Um, and in the chat, uh, we've posted some information um, about GlomCon membership uh, and, and your support and how to access some of the wonderful resources that we have. So today, we are very excited and grateful for our speaker, Dr. Sanjeev Sethi. Thanks, Dia. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Uh, it's Can everybody see the screen? It's wonderful being here on a Sunday morning. Uh, so thanks again, Dia, for the wonderful uh, introduction. It's a pleasure to be here Sunday morning. Uh, so I'll get right into this. This is... Uh, this is, my, this is my joy, to be honest, is this MPGN story and the C3 glomeropathy and complement pathways. Uh, somehow it uh, got sidetracked uh, the last five odd years with the murmurous uh, story. Some of you may be following all these antigens uh, that have come up, uh, but truly this, this is the stuff that I really enjoy, the mechanistic part of glomerular disease, the etiologic approach to glomerular disease. Uh, so this is what I did for many, many years, and I'm hoping to get back into this uh, very soon because still there are some questions to be answered about complement pathways in, in glomerular diseases. Okay, now let's move on. Uh, I don't have uh, too many conflicts of uh, pathologists, uh, not too many conflicts of interest, a uh, few chapters in up to date, and I scored some biopsies for no artists, I guess. And that's pretty much it. Um, this, uh, I just want to tell you up front, I do pathology. So this uh, uh, talk really is based on a lot of pathology, some clinical findings, uh, very little treatment option, treatment slides. Okay, there will be a few at the end, but in full disclosure, there's really not much out there. Uh, this is more to understand the disease entity. It's really a personal journey for me. MPGN is really a personal journey for me. It was my first seven, eight years at the Mayo Clinic that sort of... Uh, I think uh, got me thinking about this disease entity. So just to begin with, what is MP MPGN? Truly, it's one of those, those sort of active chronic disease entities. This is uh, key to understanding MPGN. So what happens is there's chronic deposition of material, typically immunoglobulin, subsequently complement or complement alone, um, that then causes inflammation. Um, that leads to proliferative uh, features as the reaction to any any in any material being deposited in the glomeruli. So that's your proliferative feature. So remember this is chronic, it's not acute. If it was acute, you just get one hit of proliferative and you're done like a post-infectious gene. On the other hand, what happens is when these immunoglobulins or complement keep coming, this is followed by a sort of a resolving uh, phase uh, or the healing phase, if you like to call it. And that's the membrane of part of it. So there's a proliferative part of it. There's a membrane of proliferative part of it. And that's how you get this particular pattern of injury that is characterized both by inflammation and by healing at the same time. So that's an important concept that this is a sort of a chronic story that's going on. It's not just a one hit story, uh, like an anti-GBM or even an anchor disease. So we'll get into this in a little more detail now. So what is the proliferative part of it or the inflammatory part of it? It is seen in two ways. You can see mesangial hypercellularity at one point, and then you can see endocapillary hypercellularity, and that's the proliferation. Sometimes you can get crescents, but typically uh, it's the mesangial and the endocapillary hypercellularity, which is the proliferative part of it. Resolving part of it is what is what we call the double contours or the tram tack appearance, and we'll get into this into a little more detail as I show you some pictures. Now, really, the membrane part of it is the healing or the resolving part of it as the glomerulus or the capillary loop tries to heal these deposits, uh, whether it's immunoglobulins or complement or, or other debris, and it tries to sort of wall these off so that it can curb or decrease the inflammation. So that's the resolving part. And when you have both of them going on, you get this sort of MPG and pattern. Now, if you look at the textbooks, at least when I got into this many years ago, and even in those days when I used to read the Hepton Salt textbook, uh, of pathology or, or sort of Bible, or if you look at the Brenner's textbook for nephrologists, you saw that, you know, they were sort of, they sort of told you a lot about the immunoglobulins that were there. And then there would be one blanket statement at the bottom saying complement may be or may not be present, typically present. And that was a very generic statement that they made and, it, and that was it. 
And then came the electron microscopy. We always did it in all our glomerular disease. And this characterized what light microscopy showed, showed you the proliferative feature, showed you the double contours, and showed you these deposits uh, within the glomerular basement membranes, usually subendothelial deposits to begin with. But as time moved, moved on and there was healing and resolving, we got the double contours. Let's take a look at this, okay. 